This is the last part of this book uh, in which we will talk about the assassination of General Zia Rahman and result of a plot uh, made by Major General Mansoor who was posted in Chittagong and we have already talked about uh, his planning and uh, who were involved with him in the entire plot and whatever happened how General Zia was informed by the intelligence agencies not to visit Chittagong at this uh, stage or at, at this period of time or even if he had already uh, made his mind to visit then he should not at least stay there overnight so all those things we have already discussed uh, last time we were talking about uh, the circuit house was already attacked by the plotters so at the time of attack on circuit house most of the soldiers of uh, president's guard team uh, were caught napping they were supposed to be outside, standing outside the president's room, but they were found on the ground floor. Uh, so most of them, they were killed in the very first attempt uh, by the plotters. President's room on the first floor was entirely, completely unguarded. There was nobody there. According to the initial information that the plotters had, uh, according to that, General Zayaman was supposed to be in room number nine. Captain Sitar kicked the door and it turned out that inside uh, there is another person that was uh, Miss Amina Rahman and she was the uh, standing member of she was the member of standing committee of BNP so uh, at that point they realized that president is not here so they started searching for other rooms so later they found out that someone was shouting and saying that president is in room number four so uh, some of them they reached there in front of that door and soon uh, they saw President General Zia Rahman he is coming out of his room so when General Zia Rahman he came out of his room and he shouted he said uh, what's going on or what's wrong or what do you want and I can recall that's what happened with Sheikh Mujib Rahman almost similar things he uttered when he came out of his room he was on stairs uh, and he was encountered by the attackers so anyway uh, staying on the topic the the man happened to be very close to General Zarayman at that point was Major Major Muzaffar who according to author was visib visibly shriving the other person was Lieutenant Musuliuddin so these uh, two of them were very close to president at that point so uh, Lieutenant Musleuddin, he tried to reassure President uh, by saying that uh, don't worry sir, nothing to be afraid of. Uh, in fact, both of these officers, they were still laboring under the impression that they are here to abduct General Zia Rahman and not to kill him. Matiyo Rahman, who was also by now was nearby, uh, however had no mercy for General Zoreman and he uh, started firing with his machine gun directly on president so General Zoreman when he was hit by bullets he fell down uh, upon this Matthew Rahman even still uh, Matthew Rahman still had no mercy for him and he turned his face because he fell on his face uh, so Matthew Rahman turned his face with the barrel of his gun and emptied the entire magazine on the face of General Zahraman. At this point, I would um, I would quote author. According in words of author, you have to hate somebody very much to do that awful thing. I cannot imagine what Matthew Rahman's grievance was, but it is evident from the record of mutinies against him that Zia was the man who made violent enemies so after killing General Zawrayman once they have left then the other occupants from the other rooms they started emerging uh, there were many people on the first floor sadly none of them tried to help president and most important among those people were uh, Lieutenant Colonel Marfuz and he was the personal staff officer of president's security and along him was also Captain Mazar. So both of them, they were, they did not even try to help. 
so later uh, when when interrogated colonel muzaffar he colonel muzaffar he told a very dramatic story that how he went for the president's help and he had been fired at by one of the attackers one of the armed men and he pointed at a uh, at a bullet mark on the wall uh, to support his claim uh, but later during the interrogation it was found that that bullet mark is uh, made by him just to support his uh, claim and during the investigation at some point he broke down and he admitted he confessed uh, that he was also involved uh, in the plotting uh, he was later hanged for his role in the mutiny general zia's body was left there unattended for a very long time and after an hour uh three rebel majors with several other soldiers fully armed they came again uh, again uh, they came again to the circuit house and uh they started searching the president's house uh, president's room uh, they found uh, several things from there that they had taken away they also covered president's body with a white uh, bed sheet and uh, same same was done to the dead bodies of uh, security officers who were killed bodies were taken away in the van after all this had happened now general manzoor who was the main uh, plotter he went to cantonment and he addressed some soldiers there he informed them about killing of zia uh, he also talked about all bad words zia had done so that's why he was removed and then he told them that a revolutionary council has been formed Uh, and that would run the country uh, he took oath from the officer after doing all that then general manzoor went on radio and he announced on radio that a revolution has taken place a revolutionary a revolutionary council of armed forces has taken over the government they would run the government martial law has been imposed constitution is suspended media cells are taken by government and borders are sealed uh, but the funny part here is that major manzoor is sitting in chittagong and he is doing all this from chittagong there is no support of other units and cantonment so in a way all these orders were meaningless and mutineers had no power uh, to impose whatever they said so military because entire military leadership the vice president uh, the political leadership the military leadership everything is in dhaka uh vice president is in dhaka uh vice chief of army staff is in dhaka L- lieutenant general ishad was informed and uh, he he announced that he would follow the constitution and uh, the vice president would take charge uh of the country he would take charge uh and they would not support the mutiny of uh, general mansoor so now this gave a clear direction to the armed forces and uh, to everybody in the country so they knew by na- by now they knew that this mutiny is carried out only by a group of soldiers uh, and it's not done in by the entire army in general ishad he broadcasted his orders on radio and he also gave an ultimatum by now people knew that uh, they are just a small number of soldiers and it's kind of mutiny uh, not a revolution a flood of soldiers leaving chittagong cantonment and they started going to dhaka it uh, gave uh, more encouragement to the military leadership um manzoor general manzoor was still trying so he gave a list of his demands and uh, most important among his demands were declaration of martial law uh chief justice now he has changed before it was different now he's saying chief justice to be appointed is the president and dissolution of the national assembly dissolution of the constitution and recognition of his revolutionary council so these were the demands from general manzoor even at this stage um but uh, general manzoor was answered by military leadership that the government would not accept anything but the unconditional surrender now general manzoor realized the real situation and he had no other way but to escape so he tried to escape now uh, because the, uh, most of the uh, officers and soldiers of 
Chittagong cantonment, they have already uh, started migrating uh, outside the Chittagong cantonment and they were going to Dhaka to join the main force because uh, there were several uh, things said by the military leadership that if uh, soldiers who who found to be the part of this mutiny, they would be treated uh, harshly and even to the extent of uh, using Bangladesh Air Force uh, against the Chittagong cantonment against the mutineers. So that's why uh, General Manzoor had lost all his power and he, he started uh, thinking how to escape. So making it short, he escaped from there with uh, along with some other mutineers. Uh, they escaped the Chittagong cantonment, but later he was arrested and uh, he was brought by Captain Imad. He, uh, Captain Imad brought him back to the cantonment where he was tortured and killed by some other young officers. And uh, uh, later uh, they started searching for the dead body of Zia because it was taken away by the mutineers and they buried him somewhere uh, at some unknown place but later it was found um, and th his body was sent to Dhaka. On later stages 13 officers were convicted. Uh, they were found involved in the mutiny and they were convicted and executed uh, by hanging. In the end uh, all this ended in this way. Later another chapter start started which is the era of uh, General Irshad and that's another story but uh, this book of Anthony Mascarenas, it covers only um, the era of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and General Zawar Rahman. About the personality of General Zawar Rahman, we have already talked about uh, in previous videos uh, how, about his journey, how he joined army, how he took part in the liberation war and what kind of personality he had. For me, most interesting thing about him is that he was a person with a very inscrutable personality he uh, and uh, I had talked about the reasons why uh, mainly because he was trained as intelligence officer and uh, being part of uh, intelligence agency and in Pakistan and uh, all that training maybe that had had an impact on his life and on his personality he had done a lot of good things during his era but there are also several things uh, which cannot be admired on his account.